Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. This is Sam Gabriel and in today's video I want to talk to you about a tool that uh, a staff engineer at HashiCorp put together. His name is Ranjit and he did a great job in building this API tool to talk to uh, Terraform Enterprise or Terraform Cloud to uh, basically talk to the API and grab some important information that uh, you'll find useful. So why don't we uh, take a look. All right, so uh, Ranjit here created this really good tool. He calls it the magic box. Uh, and we'll take a look at what exactly it does. So uh, I'll put the link in the description here. But basically, uh, the main thing I want to focus on today, because there's a number of things that uh, he has in this tool set. The main one is the Terraform Cloud Enterprise Activity Meter. So really, what's the problem that we're trying to solve for? Well. Uh, in many cases, you might have questions like here, he says, how many applies do I actually do in a given period of time? So maybe you're the ops team and or the DevOps team and you wanna check on all your deploys in the uh, across the entire organization using Terraform Enterprise or Terraform Cloud. How many nightly plans came back with no change or how many errors have we seen? Or uh, how many policy infractions occur every quarter? Uh, things like that are very important to uh, to look at. Um, and uh, you would have to write your own API calls to do that, but he put all this together in a nice uh, UI so they can pull out uh, sort of these reports easily. Uh, so let's take a look at what these look like. So this is the actual tool. It's built in Heroku. Uh, so if you're running Terraform Cloud, uh, you're good to go, right? You can talk to Terraform Cloud directly by putting in your organization and putting in your token. Now this token, uh, you can get it from a number of places. Uh, the easiest place, if you go to your settings, here I'm on Terraform Cloud, and go to your teams. Um, so pick a team, for example, owner's team. This team has to have access to manage workspaces, policies, and so on, to get access to, uh, to the API and, and pull the important information that you need. Uh, so generate a token, and then that's the token you're gonna pop in here. Now you might be asking, well, what if I have Terraform Enterprise that's self-hosted inside my environment? I'm not gonna open a firewall to, um, to be able to access the API. Uh, so what I did is I put together a Docker uh, image for you. I called it uh, Magic Box as well. And uh, you can pull that uh, image locally and you can run it and it will give you the exact same thing so it's local to your environment so we'll take a look at both and see what what happens okay so my organization here if I pop back in here uh, is HashiCorp Sam so let's do that HashiCorp Sam and I have my token on another screen here let me copy and paste it retrieve workspaces and it's gonna go ahead and retrieve all my workspaces. Very nice. Uh, and then I can run some reports here on specific workspaces or on the entire thing. So I'm gonna say all workspaces. Start date, end date, you can choose the date, but there's some nice presets. So I can say, show me the last six months, for example. I wanna see a number of things that you can pull from here, different metrics. How many plans were started, how many plans were ready to be queued, planned queued, planned completed, uh, cost estimation, plans that happen without an apply, uh, policy check completed, cost estimation, apply queued, apply started. So uh, errors logged, policies that failed, uh, hard fail or soft fail and run confirmed. And there are nice presets here. I like these because they automatically select what you need. So plans and applies, this is important when you are considering moving from Terraform Enterprise to Terraform Cloud. One metric that you're licensed on is the number of applies, uh, number of successful applies, not just any apply, but successful applies. So uh, this is what will get you there. You click plans and applies, and you'll see all the plans that were completed and all the applies that were completed. Then you hit retrieve activity. Once again, it's gonna go back, talk to the API pull that information for the last six months and uh, give us information uh, as you can see in a JSON format. Uh, actually, no, this is, um, yeah, it looks like JSON, I think. 
uh, but basically what it does, it's going to group everything in uh, based on workspaces. I have my Databricks Azure workspace. I've got 25 applies that were completed successfully, only but 50 were planned. So uh, if you're, again, looking at moving to Terraform Cloud for business tier, then the apply completed is what you want to look at. So we got 25. These are the successful applies. And then, of course, this is all happens per uh, workspace, as I mentioned, and then you have the totals at the end. So the last six months, I had 102 success, successful applies uh, and 191 complete completed plans. And it gives you a nice graph so you can see the plans completed and applies completed over time. A very nice, handy tool. You can do a number of other things. You can do things like policy checks, for example. And this will auto-select uh, how many policy checks were completed successfully, how many failed as a soft fail and hard fail. So you can monitor this for your team and figure out, you know, uh, are people uh, using Sentinel policies in your environment? How often are they using it? How often is it failing? And so on. Uh, you can also take a look at errors as well. So you can say, show me all the errors for all my workspaces. Uh, this might come in handy if, uh, for example, you find a workspace that has a, uh, quite a lot of errors. Maybe that team needs some help. Um, so for example, Databricks Azure errors log 24 over the last six months and so on. So very, uh, very handy tool to be able to grab this sort of information. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to run it locally. So to run this ro locally, all you need to do is run this command, docker run, um, expose any port that you have in your host, and it listens on port 8443 inside the container. So run that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and open our. Uh, by the way, this is this is documented also in. Um, I forked Ranjit's um, uh, repo here, so you can see. I'll I'll post this also in the description. You can see the command here to run it. It's very simple and easy to go to do. Um, if you want to create your own Docker uh, container, there's a Docker file as well that you can use. All right, so let's go to localhost 8443. And it brings the magic box API up. Uh, there are a number of things here. Ranjit has a few things for Puppet. Uh, but one cool thing as well is HashiCorp Workspace as a Service. Take a look at this one. Uh, once again, I'm going to put in my information and my token. retrieve my workspaces. Now, what's neat about this is um, in many cases you found, uh, I had customers tell me that, you know, uh, it's really a pain to duplicate a workspace with all the variables in it. What I mean by that is if I go back to my Terraform Cloud UI, let's take a look at the Databricks Azure workspace. And if I go to the variables tab, you see there are a number of variables that I put in place here. Okay. And uh, you can see the environment variables as well to be able to um, authenticate into Azure to build a Databricks cluster. So to get this all working, of course, you, you can do this by entering all these variables manually inside the UI, or you can use, you know, the API or the CLI to do this. Uh, but in many cases, if I want to get something quickly, I, I use the UI to get this going. Uh, but what if I want to duplicate this workspace or copy all those variables into a new workspace? Uh, this is, if you're not going to use the API, it's a manual process today. There is a feature request to create global variables that can apply to multiple workspaces. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's not available today. So as a workaround, this is where the uh, work TFE workspace as a service comes in. So I pulled all the data, the variables, Terraform variables and environment variables here. As you can see, you can make changes to them. You can update them. You can change them to sensitive, for example, uh, and so on. 
and then the neat thing is now you can say okay well uh, I can copy this over to a different TFE server or TFC server or I can copy so you can see the target organization or to a different organization uh, of course you need the token and then the new workspace name so if I say Databricks Azure 2 create the workspace it's gonna go ahead and duplicate that workspace and give it a different name so if I go back to workspaces there you have it you have Databricks Azure 2 and in here all the variables have been copied over very nicely so that's another really cool thing that you can use with the uh, with the API that Ranjit put together there's also this one I haven't tested but give it a try JSON to HCL converter uh, you can convert both ways from JSON to HCL and uh, the other way around as well um, and of course the TFC activity is what we saw earlier and uh, that's the one that allows you to see the kind of activity that's running in your uh, TFC or, or TFE environment. So hopefully this has been helpful to show you this uh, really cool tool that Ranjit put together to be able to use the API through a nice uh, UI to do a number of things like looking at the uh, activity in your Terraform Cloud or Terraform Enterprise, um, help you to figure out how many applies you're doing per month or per six months to give you an idea of you know how much uh, that will cost you if you were to be moved to Terraform Cloud for business. So that's part of the licensing model there. It also gives you the ability to copy variables over from an existing uh, workspace into a new workspace, uh, whether in the same organization uh, or a different organization or even a completely different Terraform Enterprise or Terraform Cloud uh, instance altogether. So hopefully this has been a, a helpful video and thank you for watching.